Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Can you tell which of these videos are deepfakes? What if you only heard the audio? You, the great people of America. The MIT media love wants to know. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are digging through a really interesting recent paper that came out that focuses on human detection of political deepfakes across transcripts, audio, and video. So we've talked about deepfakes on the channel before, but if you're new to the topic, deepfakes are synthetic media, so generally video or audio, that are generated using machine learning algorithms that take existing video from a person or audio from a real person and replace it with something that they have never done or said. Understandably, there's a lot of concern about how deepfakes might be used to spread misinformation, particularly political disinformation. Although if you've watched some of my earlier videos, you probably already know that one of the bigger areas of negative impact in terms of applications of deepfakes have been in revenge porn. Additionally, while earlier versions of deepfakes were fairly easy to identify as being fake versions of something, as the algorithms have improved over time, it's becoming increasingly difficult to tell whether or not a video that is a deepfake is fake, especially if you're looking at it without knowing that that might be a possibility. One of the easiest examples of this is a TikTok profile that makes deepfake videos of Tom Cruise. I did a reaction video to it over on TikTok if you want to follow me there, but essentially it's a very, very high quality deepfake and they're getting easier and easier to make. So because of that, researchers have also been investigating how well people can tell whether or not they're looking at a deepfake versus a real image. This paper from the MIT Media Lab is one of the latest pieces of research on this topic. And the interesting thing that they're looking at here is how much having transcripts of the video, having audio in the video, and having just the video impact our ability to tell whether or not something is fake. In fact, if you want to test your ability to tell whether or not something is a deep fake, you can go to this website where you will be shown examples of fake and not fake audio, video, and transcripts and be asked to decide whether or not it is fake or real. Getting back to the paper, the study had two main parts. In the first part, they are essentially looking at how well people can tell whether or not something has been fabricated based on the content of the media, so based on whether or not you only get text, audio, video, audio and video, etc. And you can see here that essentially text is the thing that people seem to be the worst at identifying as fake, whereas audio and video and audio and video with the transcript are where people are the best at doing so. Personally, when I was going through their test, I think that generally turned out to be true for me. And the thing that made the video and audio option the easiest for me was actually the lip syncing, because in most of the fabricated videos, the movements of the mouth of the speaker did not actually match up with what was being said in the audio, so you could pretty quickly figure out that something was up. Now, that obviously gets a lot harder if you're just listening to the audio because you don't have the mouth movements to line those things up, as well as if you're just looking at video because you can't hear anything and so you have to look for visual artifacts in the video that might represent something being wrong. In short, from the first part of this study, it looks like we should be a little bit more worried about generative text than we should be about audio and video deepfakes. Having said that, if you look at the videos that they use in this study, the quality of the video isn't necessarily that great, which isn't a criticism of the study at all. It's just that if you look at other examples of deepfakes, especially higher production ones that have been also done at the Media Lab, there are ways that you can make deepfakes with, in particular, much better lip syncing. Usually it involves a combination of machine learning algorithms and actually video editing software. So platforms like DaVinci Resolve are actually really good for stuff like this, and that might change essentially what these results look like if you also were to look at the quality of the deep fake and whether other editing had gone into it in order to make them more realistic. Now, the part of this paper that I actually thought was more interesting but wasn't talked about as much in some of the press releases was that the next thing that they looked at was essentially how discordant messaging influences whether or not participants can tell if media is fake. In English, this means that they wanted to see whether or not someone saying something that doesn't necessarily match up with our 
political assumptions about what they would say impacts whether or not we think that a piece of media is real. And this is particularly interesting in the era of fake news because there's been a lot of research that has shown that if you are shown media that directly conflicts with your beliefs and values, you are less likely to have a measured response and decide to further investigate that and potentially change your beliefs than you are to double down really hard on what you originally thought. They did this by showing participants two videos. One is a silent video with subtitles that show a message that is discordant with what the general public would think that person would say, and the other video is a silent video that has no subtitles. And what they found is that participants were 5% less accurate on the video with subtitles than the video without subtitles. In other words, having subtitles that show a message that doesn't match up with what we would expect that person to say makes us less accurate in our ability to identify whether the media is fake or not. Interestingly, it looks like most of the negative effect that we're seeing here is actually on the non-fabricated videos. So the videos that are real, but that shows someone saying something that we just wouldn't expect them to. And they didn't find a strong significant difference in their performance on videos that had been fabricated. So if you're interested in developing deep fake detection technologies but aren't sure where to start on your machine learning journey, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know that it's an amazing tool for learning STEM built off the principle of active problem solving. Brilliant has an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual, hands-on ways, including courses on algorithms and neural networks. In fact, Brilliant recently updated a bunch of their courses to be even more interactive. Have you ever wanted to learn how computer programming works but were put off by opaque coding language? Brilliant can help you learn how to program without having to dig through the weeds of coding syntax through these fun, interactive challenges. You just shift around these blocks of pseudocode, and then you can get immediate feedback on your results. It's a good way to understand how computer algorithms work, and then once you have that down, the coding syntax becomes a lot less intimidating. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Jordan or visit the link in the description, and the first 200 people will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. You can check out my other videos on Deepfix up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here, and otherwise, I will see you all next week. Bye.